welcome to the show, Priscilla Pruitt and her husband, Sean. Hi, guys. Thanks so much for Hi. being here. <laughs> oh. How are you? you guys for tuning in? Yes, yes. And you two are just an absolutely adorable couple. You look so good together. Oh, thank well, thank you. you. Yes. And I'm <laughs> I think so. Yeah, I'm thrilled to have Sean joining us today because it's going to be fun to get the insider scoop from the male perspective on pageantry. I imagine that's kind of an interesting thing. So we're going to get into that a little bit later. Uh, but first, I, I mentioned in our introduction, Priscilla, about the work that you are doing with baby boxes. And I'm just, I've never heard of that before. I'm so curious to learn. Tell me what that is and about your involvement with that. Well, I partnered with them actually the first day that they opened their first box in the U.S. So it, it wasn't a coincidence. It was totally a God thing. But it's basically an alternative to the safe haven surrenders, which is basically um, the safe haven law, meaning that you can surrender any infant, newborn, at any safe haven location, which can include fire stations, police stations, hospitals, churches, just depending on your state, the laws do differ from state to state, but it's a way to prevent the abandonments of babies. And those laws have been in place for several years now, but babies are still being abandoned. And so this was an added alternative to where babies that are still being abandoned because we've had these laws and babies were still being found on the doorsteps of churches, of hospitals and freezing to death. Wow. And so instead of having that happen, this is a way to be completely anonymous because that's what parents want when they, they surrender their babies. Mm -hmm. And these boxes are a way for them to have no shame, to feel no guilt, to be able to surrender the baby and not have to face those child abandonment charges and still have that baby make sure that that baby is safe and it's climate controlled and the baby is picked up within three to five minutes. Wow. I mean, this is <laughs> some pretty high tech and pretty heavy stuff too, right? Like to think, you know, I, I have conversations with my husband often about the Uber era that we're living in, right? There's yeah. all this like doorstep service and it sounds like doorstep service now, even for the abandonment of babies. That's incredible. Yeah. It kind of is. It yeah. Kind of is. I didn't think about it that way. <laughs> Unreal. Wow. So, wow. Never we just. To stop, you know, abandonments. Yes. Let's yeah. Do it. Let's do it. I like that. Gosh. <laughs> Leave it to Mrs. International. Just dive right in there. That's incredible. Gosh. How cool. So, um, so what is, so, okay. Give me the scoop on like how you got interested in this as a platform. Cause this is a really deep topic. I'm wondering if you have a background in this or give me the scoop. Well, I've had this passion for children ever since I was a little baby. And it's funny because I watch my little five-year-old girl and she's the exact same way. She sleeps with her baby doll. She believes that they're real. She just adores them. Any baby that she sees around her, she's flocked to them and like just loves them. Yeah. And I'm the same way. And it's something that's always been instilled in my heart. And so I've always had this passion and come to find out that my dad, when he was young, he was the product of a failed late term abortion. And it, I realized that it was something that God was doing in my heart. That it was, it was meant to be. And so a few years back, I was watching a, a documentary on YouTube. It was like a short documentary and they later made a movie about it called the Dropbox. But oh. it was about pastor Lee, who's out of Korea and he would do these, um, daily walks before going to bed every evening and he found a baby at a dumpster and he had this brilliant idea of putting a box and at the time it was literally a cardboard box with a sign and it said to instead of dumping your baby please leave your baby here and i will pick him up and so he would make these walks and check it daily and every hour and he came up with this brilliant idea and he had saved all these babies and he raised them in his home and he has this amazing testimony and I'm watching it. I'm crying. I'm saying, Lord, I want this for me. I want to do that. And so I told my husband the day that I watched that, I was like, this is what I want to do. This is my goal in life. And so that's always been something that I've been saying. I feel like we're going to move to China. We're going to help stop the abandonment of babies in China. Cause in China, there's been 200 million baby girls that have been killed. Is that and right? So, wow. And so this is something I've always wanted. And yeah, when I was having a coach, coaching session, session with somebody and she said, well, what is your ultimate goal? Because you have all these facets that you're involved in and we're trying to narrow it down and focus on one area. And I said, well, my ultimate goal is to build baby boxes. She was like, 
that's a baby box. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know. That's what I'm thinking too. Like, wow, unreal. It just, that's where it happened. It was like, I, I looked it up to show her and I realized that there was baby boxes. Yeah. There were baby boxes in the U S and that's the very day that they opened their first baby box. Oh, wow. And I reached out to them and they reached back and we were connected immediately. Wow. So. Now, were you already Mrs. International at that point or this is before the title? Okay. What about a state title? Did you have a state title? Yes, okay. I was Mrs. Wyoming. Okay, great. So you were already Mrs. Wyoming. You reached out to them. They were pumped, probably. They're like, wow, <laughs> this sounds great. This woman's totally up our alley, and she's faith-based, and her husband's back in here 100%. Yes. So yes. cool. Good. Sean, what was your initial response to her saying, hey, there's this whole baby box thing? She probably came to you in tears, like, after 8 p.m., like, honey, I just watched this movie. <laughs> How did that yeah. go over? <laughs> you know what? If this happened like 10 years ago, I'd have been like, you're crazy. <laughs> yeah. But, well, knowing Priscilla, she gets these amazing, like, big dreams, mm. and she makes them happen. I'm yeah. so proud. So yeah. now I, when she says something like this, this big, I'm just like, okay. Yeah. I remember I was his family. I was like, we're going to build baby boxes. <laughs> Sorry, arm. Oh, that's okay. Uh, I told his family, we're going to build baby boxes. And uh, they were looking at me like, what's a baby box? And so I've been saying this for years. So yeah. it's kind of funny. They're like, I remember you saying that. Here it is happening. <laughs> it's coming so into it's fruition. So cool. Good. Yeah, I call those big dreams the God-sized dreams. Like yes. they're the yes. dreams that are just so big that you never could do it on your own. It has to be done with God's hand, you know. Exactly. And, and I know that you guys, and especially as pastors, what how what kind of role has faith played in pageantry for you Priscilla and even for Sean maybe you can comment on that too like how has faith been a part of your pageant experience Well it's a big part of it it's the only reason I even entered a pageant I had a dream actually my has my husband had the first dream Yeah I had a you know I had a dream that we're both on stage together oh. and there was these spotlights on us we were dressed Priscilla looked beautiful. I was wearing a suit. And, you know, in my industry and what I do and what she does, we're not leaving the house all the time. We don't have to. I don't wear suits to work. Yeah. So it's a rare occasion for us. And so and it then was I right had a in line with the dream. And then I had a dream that I was being crowned. Oh. And that to the right, I saw these the owners and there was an aura around them. And see, I didn't know at the time that Mary and Mel, the owners of the International Pageant System, that they sat to the right. And I didn't know that they were faith-based people, that they were wow. Christians. Yeah. And so when I had that dream, I didn't understand it at the time. Mm. And I talked to my coach and um, she was like, well, the owners are Christian. And, you know, she was really telling me that they're, you know, strong people, that they believe in the Lord. And, yeah. and I was like, hmm, that could be it. But when I won and I realized that they sit on the balcony to the right and to the left on the balconies where, where the judges sat, yeah. I was like, this was my dream. <laughs> wow! <laughs> it, it really rocked our faith because yeah. to see things that God has spoke to our hearts actually come to fruition yeah. and to see her walk through these doors. Yeah. I mean, it, our faith is skyrocketing. And his dream was like five years before the pageant. Yeah. Is that so, right? Wow. <laughs> Holy cow. Isn't it crazy how it's like, sometimes we have to wait so long for God's things to come to fruition. You got to yeah. plant the seeds. You got to do the work. You know, I tell my clients all the time, just because you get a download from God doesn't mean it's going to happen tomorrow. You know, yeah. he's going to set you up with the right resources, the right people, the right circumstances, but you got to still take the action. You know, you got to walk down the path, right? Exactly. Right. Faith without works is, it's, it's, it's nothing. Dead. It's dead. Yes. Yes. And so you really have to take that step of faith. And for me, it was really tuning in and zoning in and be like, you know, God, am I hearing from you? Is this something you really want for me? Yeah. And really pursuing that. I prayed about it for about six months. Yeah. I really sought wise counsel about it. Yeah. I was like, look, I don't want to do a pageant and have my heart broken. Yeah. You know, um, I want to make sure that if this is from you, you know, that it's going to be blessed. I want his hand to be upon it. Yeah, I want him to guide me, cover me from any, any cruelty, any yeah. kind of pain or suffering. Yeah. And he literally guided me every step. He gave me my platform. Wow. He gave me what to call it. Yeah. I accidentally sent a book that I was sending to a friend to myself. And it was basically, it helped me through my entire platform um, journey. So wow. it was so guided that, I mean, 
without a doubt, it was a God thing. Yeah. Wow. Well, <laughs> I remember in, um, when I was growing up in summer camp, there was this song. Um, I feel like it was, it was Ephesians. Anyway, the verse is, and he will make your path straight. And we had all these like, and it's like, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Right. And it's that, that verse is like, you truly have yeah. to trust him and he will literally make your path straight. You still got to walk the path, but he makes it straight. You know, exactly. such a beautiful right. story. That's cool. So tell me this, Priscilla, have you competed in a pageant before or was this state pageant your first ever pageant? You know, when I was young, don't laugh. <laughs> when I was, I'm already young, laughing because I'm like, uh, I have a feeling to know where this is going. <laughs> when I was a young teen, um, I entered the first um, Christian pageant. Okay. So it was Miss Christian Teen Texas and Miss Christian Teen USA. Okay. So it was an inner beauty pageant, which sounds kind of cheesy, <laughs> but it was the best first pageant to ever enter cool. because it really taught me that that's the beauty that matters and to make sure that that's the first beauty that shows. Mm. I don't want them to see this. I want them to see my heart. And so it was the greatest thing that ever happened to me. It sounds really cheesy, but that was where I started. Yeah. I love that. That's cool. So how <laughs> old were you at that time? I was the youngest. I had just turned 13. Oh. And so they made an exception for me, but I was the youngest there. Did you and win? I got third runner up. Oh, third no. runner up. Okay. We'll take it. Good. So that's yeah, kind of where you caught good. the pageant bug. And then fast forward, you had this dream. First, then Sean had a dream. Sean, did you tell her about this dream or were you like, oh. uh, you did. Okay. He I writes did. down his dreams. He's really good about that. That's great. Yeah. And yeah. the fact that it happens is just incredible. Yes. Yeah. He writes down all his dreams and he'll go back and be like, you know, I think I dreamt about this and go back and be like, I did. Wow. <laughs> and I, I remember we're at the pageant and it's the only one girl could take home the crown. There, there were 62 beautiful women there beautiful. from all over the world. Amazing. Accomplished. And wow. I was questioning what God spoke to my heart. Thanks. No, I mean, I mean, come on. Hey, I mean, anyone you know, would. Yeah. Yeah, but exactly. you know, after her interview, her on stage interview, I I texted her. I said, "You won. You you are Mrs. International." Oh. You know what's funny? I'm going to tell you that on stage interview was not me. I left it all on the stage. I remember before walking on stage, and I mean, if you're not a Christian, please don't be offended by this. But this is exactly what I did before I walked on that stage. I had raised my hands up high and I said, "Lord, let Your will be done. You speak through me. I surrender myself to You." And I literally stomped on that stage. And it was like a boldness took over to where yeah. when I walked on that stage, it was like this fire came over me. And Ooh. I don't even know what I said because it was so powerful. And it was like authoritative, you know? Yeah. So it was amazing. Holy Spirit. That's some Holy <laughs> Spirit speaking, girl. Oh, I love exactly. it. Exactly. It yeah, was amazing. I can't such... take any, any of the credit for that. Yeah. That was all him. Unreal. Wow. Wow. <laughs> oh, this is so cool. I love your story. Great. So, okay. So tell me this in your interview, because it sounds like you really knew what to do and how to nail the actual on stage question, which is equally like nerve wracking and just can, can be truly just, you get in your head and drive yourself crazy. But the mm -hmm. interview is too. And especially in the international interview, because you're with all of these other women all at the same time. There's so much going on in that one room. You're timed. It's really short. And then you stand up and then you go to the next chair and then you turn around. It's like, oh, there's so much stuff happening. What little tips do you have? Or what was the thing that helped you to like just calm down, stay focused and get in the zone to get through that interview and to truly perform? You know, it's another crazy story because I like the worst kind of thing stories. that happened to me was the best thing that happened to me. I had my makeup done and mm -hmm. it was not anything like what I would do. Oh. It, um, it was just really a lot of foundation. My eyebrows were covered in foundation. My moles, I have like moles on my face and I don't ever wear foundation. I'll wear a little powder. Mm -hmm. And so I wasn't used to the way I looked and I was really matted and muted. And I went to my room and I literally was like, I had five minutes to change into my clothes. And I was like, Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. And I try to like add, fa like take off some of that foundation and try to add lipstick and color. And I'm a girl that wears red lipsticks and you know, I never even wear eyeshadow. I wear eyeliner and I'm really, um, I don't know, I guess more natural. I would, I'll put, wear like bright color lipstick and that's yeah. about it. And so it just wasn't me and I didn't feel comfortable, but it was the greatest thing that ever happened to me because I didn't have time to get into my head. 
Uh, I was so worried about my face <laughs> and my makeup that I didn't have time to worry and think about what if they asked me this? What if they asked me that? Oh my goodness. You know, I wasn't um, getting in my head. Yeah. So I felt so, um, I don't know, uncomfortable with my makeup that I was like, I'm just going to have to make up with it, make up for it with my actions and my words and my personality. And so because I didn't have time to fix it to, you know, make me feel comfortable, I just had to make up for it. And so I was really expressive and I was using my hands and I was exciting and I was like, you know, really normal, casual. So they felt like they were talking to somebody who's just talking to you on the subway or at church or, you know, at the grocery store, not somebody who's perfect and still yes. and talking perfectly and eloquently i know girl oh man so they remembered me because yes. i was like this i was all over the place and i was natural and i was me yeah. and that's i think that that's what stood out wow i love that and <laughs> and that impression that you give you know we joke because there is a tendency in every one of us to feel like okay i have to i have to be i have to be the most poised the most graceful exactly. you know like we we have this vision of some like pageant princess unicorn woman that's know, like right? this perfect person <laughs> and it, that doesn't exist you know the true winners it's are the so ones true. that yeah right oh, so so true. I love that but, story you know, they're all gonna be like that the way to stand out is just be you yeah just be who you are use your hands be expressive talk use your face wrinkles wrinkle your face yeah. just be normal yeah you know and yeah. I, I remember telling my husband I watched a recent interview we did on tv and I was like Oh, I shouldn't wrinkle my forehead like that. I should have gotten Botox for the first time. He's like, no, <laughs> that's what makes you normal. Totally. That's what makes you stand yeah. out. You know, it's okay to not be perfect. Yes. Let them see that because yeah. it's those imperfections yeah. that makes you unique. So true. Yeah. Sean, I bet you have all kinds of stories. I would love to hear from you a story about Priscilla before she won when she's like in the preparation mode, cause you know, about a month before you're actually leaving is when all of a sudden everything comes up. Like you, uh, you forgot to get a pair of shoes for this and the earrings for this aren't gonna work and you found this other pair and you know, then you, oh, I gotta get the alterations back. And I know that your house was probably absolute mayhem. Yeah. Tell me yeah. about that experience from your side of the thing. You know, it, it's about the equivalent of, of dealing with a woman that's about to get married. You know, oh, they are, is. You, they're, you're, you're walking on eggshells, <laughs> but at least, you know, I'm not in my 20s, you know, I've been around the block. And so I've been, what, Be this, nice. what this Be is nice. like the <laughs> third pageant I've been involved with, with mm -hmm. you. So I learned when not to say anything. Good, good so man, smart man. I just wait and I'm like, okay, what do you need, honey? But anyways, there was dresses everywhere. Every five minutes while I'm working, talking to multimillionaires, she's coming here with dresses saying, hey, how do I look, honey? Sit me up here, honey. Do I look fat? I'm like, oh my God, you're driving me crazy. Yeah, it's cute. that pageant week where you're picking out every outfit. It's yeah. almost like a fashion show because yes. the women are dressed to the T. It's perfection. Yeah. And you change like two or three times just because you want to look cute in every little yes. outfit every time you eat <laughs> and so um I was trying on like 50 dresses and be like which one should I wear do you yeah. like this one do I look good um yes or no and he was so good he was you know no that doesn't make your butt look good or uh, you know he's good. so honest. honest yeah and so yeah yes. he was pretty honest with me and you know that's but she I also she had to pre-pack for six kids too so wow. I did I pack for every one of my kids I get their outfits ready for each yeah. day wow. and I have it all set up and I'll have a note on top of each one add to this the toothbrush yeah. the sound machine you know nice. <laughs> and so it wasn't just packing for me it was packing for the whole family and wow. we stayed for five extra days and went to Disney World afterwards. So it was packing for two trips, really. Yeah, yeah. So it was it was interesting. Wow, you guys make an incredible team, that's for sure. <laughs> you know, and that's the value of having a solid teammate when you compete for this level of pageantry. You really do have to have a strong support system. So you know, true. That's such Incredibly. an understatement. Yeah. That's probably the most important thing in a married woman pageant because yeah. you really have to have that support system that backs you up, that's there to help you along the way, because I wouldn't be able to do it without him. Yeah. There's absolutely. no way. I mean, he, <laughs> he's having to be Mr. Mom a lot yeah. right now. Yeah. And, um, you know, I will tell you though, it's not easy for guys. No. 
Oh, okay. Because, and I, I think this is really important for, yeah. especially someone that's um, thinking of entering into pageants or winning. Mm -hmm. It's hard on the guy because, yeah. you know, the guy is used to the one going out to work, coming home, bringing home the bacon. Mm -hmm. But but Priscilla, she's doing the traveling. Wow. She's on the stage. They're rolling out the red carpet, and I'm at home, you know, cooking macaroni and cheese, up, you know, the kids, and <laughs> yep. I'm like. Hey, honey, can we talk? Oh, I'm busy, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah. do you even love me? <laughs> you know. But you have to make sure that your relationship is solid. It yeah. has to have a good foundation. Exactly. Mm. And your husband can't be someone that's um, self-conscious. He has mm. to be someone who is confident. It's going to cause a lot of problems, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he has to be very confident and ready to let you live your dreams. Yeah. Because this is a time, and this will be a season, where your wife is going to be lifted up. And will you be okay with her being in the spotlight and just helping her along the way, helping lift her up and you taking a seat in the back seat just for a little time? Yeah. You know, it's just a season. It, it is so important for the, the, the woman to know that the man struggle Yeah. They because do. they take it personal. Like, wait a minute, you're not, why aren't you supporting me? Why are you so stressed yes. out? Aren't you happy for me? And in the end, the man's super happy for their wife. <laughs> But they just feel so beat up, and and they just they just want to know that their wife loves them. Yeah. That's it. At the end of the day, yeah. and it's important. It's important to be fed. Meaning, you know, I read the Word. I spend time with God. I have a relationship with my Maker. Yeah. And um, yeah. it's important to have that relationship, mm -hmm. because if I didn't have that relationship with Him, I'd be focusing on the negative. Our marriage would be negative. Yeah. It'd be, you know, it just would not be a joyous occasion. Yeah. And so you really learn how to work together because of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it, if, if you, everybody wants to be here. Yeah. But if you, if you're not willing to work with your wife and allow her to grow, you're always going to be here. Yeah. 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 That's I love that. That's right. That's the difference in a good marriage is that if the man is willing to step back for just for a season and let his wife live her dream, mm. that's the meaning of true love to mm -hmm. me. That's true love because he's willing to put aside his, you know, his little goals or his, you know, daily struggles just to lift you up. And that's what, that's what true love really yeah. is. I love that. It's so true. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And that must be tough because Sean, tell me more about what industry you are in and what skills are you able to pull from that industry? Does it apply at all to pageantry? Or have you been able to help Priscilla in, in things that you're applying in your day-to-day -day work? You know, it, I, I work in the oil and gas investment realm. Okay. I, right now we're developing projects in, in Canada. And so I connect with a lot of high net worth investors. I work with a lot of oil and gas operators. And so you're dealing with CEOs and, um, you know, just really, um, business minded people. Yeah. And so as far as uh, helping promoter, I mean, it helps with the whole networking side. Um, as far as, um, you know, like doing these things, I mean, yeah. if, if I didn't have the experience I had in oil and gas and talking to investors, I would, wouldn't be able to do this with her. He's been able so? to help me a lot. Yeah. He has made some incredible videos for me. Mm. We have oh, made yeah. PSAs that have gone national, international, for National Safe Haven Alliance, and we're the ones acting in it. My family, yeah. um, I remembered in one of the PSAs, I actually abandoned my baby in it by wow. a dumpster. And, you know, he was the videographer, the editor. He did all of that because he knows how to do that. And yeah. so he's been integral in this whole thing. And so it was truly a, a partnership. Mm -hmm. When I won, it was something that we have to do together. Yeah. And so that's really important. I love that. I so admire your relationship. I'm I'm a relatively newly newlywed, uh, oh, still under a year. You. Thank you. Only about four or five months. And uh, yeah, and it's been great. So we're constantly like seeking to grow and always just implementing little tools and tips. If you could give one tip to a pageant couple out there, what might be an exercise they could do or something that would help them to really just form their bond that much stronger to prepare for this year of service? You know, my big thing is having a vision board. Mm. Have a vision board of you, your own visual board, vision board, and then have a vision board as a couple for a marriage. Oh, what you it. have as your dreams and goals together and pray every night about about those dreams and about your personal dreams and just watch whenever they start happening, just watch how you can, you know, check them off and th thank God for them that they happened. 
and you'll see your life change, but you have to pray more. It needs to be something that you do together and really constantly dream, constantly have something you're working towards. Don't, don't just have something, check it off and then be like, now what? Make a bigger dream, keep dreaming, have bigger visions and goals and never stop. Yeah. Wow. That's excellent <laughs> advice. I love it. Thank now, you. I want to I have one more question for you because you've mentioned a few times that you were working with a coach and you of course you know that that is what I do, interview coaching. And yes. so I'm curious to know what was it that what value do you feel like that coach brought or, or why did you why were you interested in them? Like what made you decide to really go the coach route? Well, you know, I had never used a coach before. Okay. And um, in national pageants, I had gotten first runner up and I'd gotten this close. And, you know, I was like, you know, where I struggle is I'm great on the interview because I'm myself. But on that on stage, like, I'm kind of like a deer in the headlights. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I really needed help with that on stage question. And that's the crazy thing is that I nailed that more than ever. And so I really think that it really helped me have that, that extra added confidence. I think that coaches are a must have. Now I am sold. <laughs> all right. She's a believer. <laughs> I think that it makes all the difference in the world mm-hmm. because even if I hadn't used, you know, whatever thing she taught me, I still had a confidence now that I felt prepared. And so it was before that I didn't feel prepared. I was scared of the question, but she had me so prepared that it didn't matter. The question could have been, you know, something dumb that I'd never practiced, but I was so confident now that it made all the difference in the world. Yeah. I love that. Yes. My, (laughs) my belief is that confidence comes from knowing and applying the truth. So when you know the truth and you know, like, okay, here's what to expect. Here's how it really ought to be. Here's what I'm really good at and what I should not do. And, when you really know the truth and you know it and you know it, you know it, and then you put it into action, now it's like yes. unstoppable. Yeah. Yes. You know what? This is something that really stood out to me. In the international in the international pageant systems, yeah. when they ask you the question, yeah. it will be something like, um, your platform is building families through the power of love until there are no more abandonments. As Mrs. International, how would you implement this in third world countries? And I would have been like, what? <laughs> Because it's so long. Yes. And so she had me so prepared that don't listen to the whole thing in the beginning. Wait till the end. And that's the question. And so little things like that, that I would have had no idea that I was so prepared for. And it made all the difference in the world. Yeah. That's so great. Good. I love it. Yeah. Sean, go for it. No, I was saying, I think her pageant coach was key. Yes. Because everybody has something they're good at. I mean, they wouldn't be going into the pageant industry if they didn't think they were good at something. And so there are beautiful women out here. I mean, the, these 62 women she competed with, they're all beautiful. They're the cream of the crop, oh. I must say. And Priscilla, <laughs> like, she has incredible stage presence. I mean, the way she walks, her interview, her uh, face-to-face interview, incredible. But her on stage wasn't perfect. Like, she needed some work there. And um, it, it just a, – a coach helps you – become well-rounded yes. and it makes you strong in every area of the pageant. And I think that's what made the difference. Yeah. I do too. That's awesome. That's great to yeah, hear. No longer yeah. a runner up. <laughs> yeah, that's right, girl. Now you're holding the crown. Very cool. Good. Well, so I want to hear my final parting thing. What's next for you? What's coming up in the rest of your year? Well, um, we haven't even announced it or anything yet. Can I say it? Say, say what? it, say right. it, say it, say it. Oh, never mind. Just um, well, we have two little things that we're praying about. Cool. And so we're either moving to Belize. Wow. That's awesome. Or I was offered a position to co-host a Christian TV show. So. Wow. These are awesome. Oh, my gosh. So gosh, this is so great. Or the yeah. Other. yeah. Wow. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, you well, heard it first here. I love it. That is right. <laughs> this is another one of those big dreams. dreams God's placing on our hearts. And so we could either walk through the doors that God has opened or we could sit idle. Yeah. And we know that our time here is coming to an end. And I'm not talking about eternally. I'm just talking yeah. about literally in this town. Yeah. Our time here is coming to an end. It's time for the next uh, plan. Mm-hmm. So, so far, God has been faithful every day. Wow. Big door we've walked through, 
He's always made a way, he led the way. Wow. Yeah. So we, oh. you know, we really thought we were set on Belize. We don't, maybe Belize is in the future, but just three days ago, I was offered this position as a co-host. And so we were like, whoa, yeah. this kind of put a halt to it and said, okay, let's, let's pray for both and see where God leads us That's because right. we don't want to necessarily go through a door if it's not even from him. That's right. So we are just going to pray until we know for sure, but we will either be in Belize in a couple months or we will be in um, Cheyenne, Wyoming as a co-host. So we'll see. Oh, wow. I'm (laughs) glad I asked. That is awesome. Well, congratulations on all of those opportunities. I mean, hey, it's, it's a good place to be to be able to sort through opportunities, right? That's not, that's not too bad. Yeah. Wow. Well, I am thrilled for you guys already, Priscilla, your year has been incredible. You've made massive leaps and bounds, not just for your platform, but also for the pageant. So congratulations. And thank you as an international pageant sister. I thank you for your contributions to the pageant too, because that has just made just your impact is just rippling effect everywhere and i know that that's got why god had you in this position at this time so that you could do that yes yes so thank you and congratulations to you and now tell me just where can people find you so people who are watching this interview and they want to look up more information where might be the best places that they can go on social media or on a website where is the best place to find you you could visit me at because i choose love.org Excellent. Perfect. And, and everything I'm else also is there? on Facebook, Mrs. International. If you, if you Google Mrs. International 2016, Priscilla's all over the place. Yeah. And you can find me She's on Twitter, Mrs. International, on Instagram, Mrs. International. So Perfect. I will be on there. It just says 2016. There will be a few Mrs. International. Just okay. look for 2016. That's excellent. Me. All right. Good. And I will go ahead in the show notes. I'll put some links too that people can awesome. find you so they can Thank click you. there and go go Absolutely straight to find it. Find me, follow me. The more the merrier. Awesome. I would love to follow you as well. So great, good. And, th- and we've got to discover now are we going to be in Belize or are we going to be on TV? Exactly. So That's we got to so. follow to find yeah. out. We'll either be doing missionary work in Belize cool. um, or, you know, co hosting a yeah. TV show. So missionary we'll work on TV. Hey. Either one, girl. You're in it for God. I love that, sista. So, so cool. Yeah. Well, thank you guys for joining me today. I so appreciate you taking time out of your crazy busy schedules, both of you. I know to get the two of you in a room is like a miracle. So thank you for taking this time to spend with me. I super appreciate it. Oh, thank you for having us. We had an amazing time. We did. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. We appreciate it.